respectful, then I don't care, you know. All right, so we're going to move on to the third question, um, which is, um, this question was submitted by Miss Shug Knight. She should be in the comment section, Miss Jenna yeah. Marie Johnson. Um, she said, what form of love was taught to you as a child that shaped you as an adult? That, that what? What form of love was taught to you as a child that has shaped you as an adult? And I'm going to go first. I, I'm going to use a vocabulary word. I'm going to say accountability. So like my mom, you know, she's like, uh, you know, you just got to be responsible or whatever. Whatever you do, it comes back on you. So I use that now, accountability as an adult now, you know, um, that's my form of love that has shaped me as an adult to make me a responsible adult now, you know, accountability. Like if I, if I fuck up or if I do something wrong, I don't have no problem with like brushing it off um, on somebody else or something else and be like, well, it wasn't my fault. It was, well, if they would have just, no, no, I'm an adult. I can, I'll stand in whatever it is and I'll take accountability. If I fucked up, okay, I apologize. How can we fix this? If something is broke, how can we fix this? Fix this? How can I make it right? So uh, my love, what was shown for me as love as a child would be accountability for me. I'll go, go ahead and go. Okay. Um, I know growing up, I've all, well, not growing up, but I'm, I'm, I'll say I'm brought up on love and survival. Mm -hmm. Some people are brought up on either or, which shapes them to either be a loving person or a person that doesn't know how to receive love. Um, the reason why I say both is because my mother always made sure that me and my brother were perfectly fine being ourselves being in tune with our own feelings not being one of those kids one of those guys that was men don't cry kind of thing big boys don't cry kind of thing like she always nurtured us to the point where we knew what it was like to feel love and give love now on the other hand I've had to grow up on survival for the simple fact of my father my father was this ideal man my father was this pastor um, him and my mother were co-pastors of a church. Um, now I'm getting vulnerable now, but he, you know, they were married 18 years. Next thing I know, he's walking out. Next thing I know, he, he, we're, things coming out of the water. We find out he's been committing infidelity, things of that nature. I'm not, I won't go into it, but being that when he walked out, I didn't know how to be a man. And then, you know what I'm saying? You know, the phrase, your mother can't really teach you how to be a man. She tried her best. She tried her best. But I've had to survive and learn things that it, the hard way, basically. I had to learn things in ways that if my father was there, he probably could have kept me from there. He probably could have kept my brother from there if he was there. What what at what age did um he became Casper? At what age? I you? so let's see, it was 2005. It was a year before I moved to South Carolina. I want to say I was a 12 turning 13. Okay. Okay. Um, so he was there half my life. Right. But even still, he was there when I don't really need, I'm learning, but like, I'm still a kid. So like the, the hard stuff is, you know, when you're getting older as a, as a man, is that making sense what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, it does. So when I really needed him, I, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm getting some hair on my chest. I'm getting some hair on my face. I'm, I'm making more decisions. I, I didn't have him. So the decisions that I'm making, it was literally trial and error. You know what I'm saying? So it was, that's why I say it was love and survival. And it shaped me to be a man that wants to not afraid to talk about his feelings and, and to be soft, you know what I'm saying? But also like to know when to be soft. That makes sense. Right. It does. So, it does. Mm. I got a question for you, Daniel. Yes, ma'am. So with him doing that, did that affect your ability on how to on how to learn uh or how to love a woman or how to treat a woman? Did that affect affect you in any kind of way? <clears throat> I like the problem. I, this is not me boasting at all. Um I, I love quotes. So if you hear a bunch of quotes, I'm sorry. There's a quote that says, uh, a smart man learns from his own mistakes. A wise man learns from other people's mistakes. So in the past couple, in the, in the last few years, 
of my uh of my parents' wedding, wedding, marriage, as it was going downhill, whatever, I didn't notice it. I still remember how not to treat a woman. So if anything, he taught me how not to treat a woman. You know what I'm saying? He taught it, let the let the uh the the movies and the and the the TV shows where the hopeless romantics are falling in love. Let them teach me how to be romantic. He taught me what not to do. Okay. So it fe- it affected me, yes. But I feel like it didn't affect how I treat a woman. Because to this day, I'm still a gentleman. He just taught me what not to do. So then actually you know your saying? mom did teach you then, because I'm sure you where he picked where he dropped the ball at 12 your mom continued you know running with it definitely so, definitely yeah. the only reason the only reason why uh, i was talking about like the actual things that a man right can teach you know what i'm saying but as far as that side of things she taught me that she right. taught me what you know to expect of standards of a strong woman of a good woman she told me what to you know she taught me things that about these females that you know what I'm saying? If she didn't, I probably would have been somewhere in the creek. Somewhere. You get what I'm saying? Like, she's taught me so much about how to love, but he's taught me what not to do. Okay. And so I just, argue. yeah, and I had to. You know what I'm saying? I had to only because, like, if I just sat there, like most people do, that have daddy issues, and then they're just mentally messed up because all they're thinking about is what happened. You get what I'm saying? Not everybody. Again, the same thing in the damage thing. I'm not talking about everybody. I'm just saying right, in, right, some, right. in some circumstances, <laughs> you know, it's just you have to. It, I, I'm a glass half full kind of person. I've always been that type. So, like, yeah. All right. Um, I can go. Okay. For me, um, love for my household was I'm going to piggyback off um, Daniel. Definitely survival and loyalty. Ooh. My mother, she was, um, she's a mother of four women, four girls. She was a mother, she's a mother of four women. So um, for survival, we lost, I lost my father at, at an early age. So she had to do it on her own. I see her to do it on her own, like work all these jobs, several jobs, making sure that we had clothes on our back, food on the table. And like, you know, just surviving, you know what I'm saying? And like, honestly, to this day, like I've learned because I have to survive. And every time I get to a survival mode, I think about my mother, like, okay, she showed me how to do that. I know I can make it. And when I go home to her, I'm like, you know what, Ma? Guess what I did? But guess what I had to do? I survived. And she be like, that's what I'm talking about. Cause it's survival, loyalty. You know, with siblings, you have fights in the house, so you don't feel like you're loyal to these women in the house. But when we in the streets, oh, yeah. nobody gonna tell us nothing. Nobody oh, gonna yeah. tell us nothing. You're not putting your hands on my sister. You're not talking crazy to my sister. If you talk to me crazy, you talk to her crazy, it's a, it's four of us. You not, it's not easy. It's not easy for you. And I can honestly, we probably had just fought maybe hours ago. But if we go out in the streets, you're not touching my sister. You're not saying nothing about her. Not, no, no. And to this day, because no siblings, we get into it. You're not saying nothing too much about my sister. Because that's how we brought up. You're not saying much about my mother. You're not saying much about my nieces and nephews. And I don't care how much I get on. And I, I, I'm, I'm a family bachelor on Facebook. I don't give how much, how many times I go out there and I talk bad about my family. You're not going to do it. I'm loyal. You know so, what? Y- yeah. Um, Courtney taught me that a little bit. And Courtney, <laughs> you don't know this, so I'm a some transparency here. Remember oh, when Lord. I remember when um <laughs> remember uh because I'm damn near basically an only child for you. Um, remember when I was downtown, uh, Marion, and fast forward. We're not gonna go too deep into it, but basically, um, you taught me that you was like you know you and your sister and stuff. And you was like, I don't, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I don't, I don't care. You're not gonna talk to my sister. Like, it was a situation that happened, and I was like, but what if they're wrong? I was like, what, what? But what if your sister was wrong? What if your, you know, was wrong? And you was like, oh, I don't care. You was like, no, while we're here, it's, you know. And then I was like, but you was like, what behind closed doors? Like when we get back in the car. Yeah. And I yeah. always remember that I was like. That is because I'm the type of person where I'm like, I like to stand in my truth. And so I was in the mind frame thinking, like, oh no, if my sister's wrong, now you know you're wrong. You shouldn't do that. 
But I was like, it's a time, I guess the time and place for those types of things, you yeah. know, because that would like I'm divide, check, you know. I'm so. gonna check why you put me in that position, but but my thing, right, thing right. Like, nah, I'm not gonna let nobody see where we flawed at. I'm not gonna see nobody where we're weak at because when we're fighting, we're weak. I'm not yeah. gonna let you see that. But you, at this moment, Oh, you finna get it. You finna get it. And everybody who know me and my sisters from back in the day, you know, we don't play about each other. We don't do that. We don't do that about each other. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> Great. So survival and loyalty. So Keisha, mm -hmm. what about you? Um, well, I've had a little bit of everything. Um, but the biggest thing has been love. Um, and something Daniel said when he was like, uh, I can't get the exact words, but to paraphrase it, I've always been told you can either learn from someone else's mistakes or you can either learn from someone else or you learn for yourself. Um, so I grew up a lot learning from other people's things. Um, so I appreciate stuff from other people. Mm. Uh, I appreciate the fact, now my, my granddad was a farmer. So there was the cotton field, there was the back of field, there was the garden. And mm -hmm. see, he died when I was about six years old. So I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't, you know, I didn't get that chance to experience that type of farming life. But the simple fact to hear what my mom and them say, what they had to go through, what they had to do, where they had to be, how it was. If you were sick, you better be sick. And if you wasn't, you better stay sick because you was going to be in the field. Uh, like all that <laughs> stuff. I grew up appreciating the fact that I never had to go through that. So my biggest, but so with that though, like love is what they taught me. Like, it doesn't matter what, how, when, where, the arguments, the fights throughout people. I got some family members now on my buses, but. <laughs> not you, Shell. You hear that witness? Not Shell. Busting, busting. Listen, listen. Jesus got to break the point sometimes, okay? <laughs> The whole thing of it I is, play some crime mob. Nothing you but. <laughs> but I, st but I still like I have the love. Like um, I don't know if you remember Ashley. Anything when we was in school, like I used to feed people as much as people picked on me, as much as people bullied me. If you were hungry, I fed you. Like that's what I was raised with. I well, I she fed me too. I I when she was a teenager right in here. school, she used to give me some snacks. I. <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying. I remember right I here. got an ISS and she said, You hungry? I said, yeah. <laughs> listen, I listen, I love Keith. I love like she is one of the I always tell people this, like, because people, this is some behind the scenes stuff, but people be like, you know her, you know, because I guess like we kind of opposite, you know. I'm more the no, no, you're not. And she's more the come on down, you know. But <laughs> she, I love her because she's like always been the same. She's like the one of the her and Melvin, Melvin Brown, they're like the two most nicest people I know. Yes. And I'm a, I'm a handful sometimes, you know, uh, you know, not no more, you know. Sometimes. I, I mean, I ain't got no record. Like, I ain't, you know, I ain't got no, I ain't on no ankle monitor like some it's people. Shady. But, you know, it's I'm just cold. more of a, I'm the no-nonsense friend. Like, I'm not going to let you run over certain people that I know. I'm not going to do that, you know. And then I'm the person, I got bail money, you know. I'm probably not going to do that, but, you know. <laughs> but anyway so like i will say this like she's one of the most nicest people i know so when she said the love thing like that is so totally her like she's not putting on for the she camera right love. now she's like the most nicest person i know even she when she love. need to be Tell mean you. she's just like well i'm just like <laughs> hell fuck that shit like, <laughs> i'm just like and she's just like so nice like i don't i'm god's still working on me because i ain't got that yet you know my god well, I tr I mean, I try to be, but that's that's what that's what they gave me though, like the love and all that stuff. And you know, Mama taught me to survive. A lot of people probably wouldn't think so, but she has taught me to survive. Um, she's the one that's kept me out of a lot of financial debt. Like a lot of people in financial debt right now, because it's like, ooh, I could do this. Ooh, I could get credit card and right. I could do that. Ooh, I could do the loan and I could do that. and now and I'm. But she always told me. She's like, you start getting these things, they start adding up, they start That's taking right. away from you. They start doing this, they start doing that. So I have absolutely one credit card, only one. <laughs> and that is definitely For ER emergency. purposes. ER, not, not emergency, ER purposes. <laughs> oh, 
emergency room. <laughs> so I mean, so you know, so they taught me the the love. They taught me the the survival, the stability. The I mean, it's just a whole bunch that kind of I I came up with, despite the fact of my dad. My dad wasn't around with me. Uh, she left when I was kind of basically when I was a baby. My mom left, her, and I'm glad she did. But at the same time, it did affect me because right, right. a lot of the guys that I had talked to or ran into, they would begin to treat me like my dad did, which was not good, which was horrible. So generational I curse. Me. You said what happened? Yeah, generational curse. Right. And it was beginning to affect me and my sister and stuff until I spotted it one day. And I was like, no, we got to break this. We got to stop mm-hmm. that. And so he, it, it did. And I would, it, I mean, I would see it in a lot of the way the guys would treat me. So it is true. It is true a lot of times, not all the time, but it is true a lot of times where a female will date her dad. It's, it's, it's true in a, in a lot of ways. They had some qualities of them because if my daddy didn't do nothing else, my daddy loved working. Drove the bus, drove the bus by day, at Sarah Lee by night, probably was hoeing over there, but stuff like that. But <laughs> at the same time, at the same time, he would work. You couldn't get him to do nothing else. He would work and he would sing. Singing was his passion. And so, you know, it, it does have an it that has an effect as well. Cause it it it's like it's almost like it shows you, but you try to take it opposite, like Daniel. He took his opposite. Some people don't know how to do that. Some people hold on to that and figure this is the way to be. But he had the mom that was there that basically said, you treat a woman how you want your mama to be treated. Mm-hmm. Like that, I feel like that's one of the best ways a, a mama can raise her son if she happened to do it by herself is treat a woman the way you want your mama to be treated. If you don't want no man hitting me, you better not hit one. If you don't want no man disrespecting me, you better not disrespect one. Like, how you want your mom, your daughter, sister, niece, like all you know, all that is in there. So, so I have to say all of what you guys said, the loyalty and all that stuff. Because after I finish kicking their tail, I'm still gonna love them, hug them. Hey, how you doing? That that's like, true. I I agree with you, Keisha, especially about um a mom, you know, raising a son or whatever. But because I. <laughs> Quick story. Uh, I never get on um, because my I grew, grew up in a single parent home as well. Um, my mom she did get married, so she she did attempt to try to raise us up in a, a two parent household with a male figure there, but he won't shit. But anyway, um, but uh, I never get one time. Me and my brother, my um, got an argument, and my brother. Uh, I'm telling you this because of women. What Keisha said about a woman raising a boy, about teaching them how to treat a woman but me and my brother had got an argument one time and i'll never forget he told me um some juicy j type shit the uh three six mafia he was it, is it yeah three six mafia. he told me to um slob on his knobs <laughs> my mama told his oh, ass up yeah, yeah. she Did told his ass up she said slob on what <laughs> on what <laughs> That little knob you got down there, first she belittle his ass. She made she let him know ain't no corn, ain't no ear down there. It was the mini corns, you know. And she told his ass up. I, I I don't know if you remember that, but I will always remember that, you know. But anyway, so uh Miss Shugnot or uh, Jenna Marie, that was a great question. Keep them coming because that 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 made us get like intimate like more you know so now let's bring it back up it was kind of soft and all right so going to the fourth <laughs> question wait courtney it's good it's okay i couldn't even get my words together i was thinking like what everybody was saying so it's okay we move on. no no we didn't, oh, okay. we didn't go to me <laughs> oh we- <laughs> okay we got it you <laughs> Look, it's so many people over here. <laughs> Look, <I'm> so- <laughs> okay, yeah, let me get you. What you, what you learn? Yeah, cause you're, you know, you're, you're interesting. So, you know. Oh, I mean, I couldn't get my words together anyway. So, if we want to move on, we can. What do you mean? Like, okay, so, okay, what kind of love did I grow up on? I mean, I grew up on love. I want to say, I want to. That has shaped exactly. you as an adult, like something that was happening then, and like now you're taking it as an adult now, where you be like, oh, I look back on like that well, made me. 
similar to what Esther was saying, loyalty. I think because I was I grew up in a single parent home, but my dad was actively in my life throughout my whole life, um, still is. Um, and I've been fortunate enough because, you know, normally when you have parents who are at least separated, you only get to know kind of one side of the family. Right, right. I've been lucky enough to know both sides of the family. And luckily, both of my both sides of my family are very family oriented. They're very loyal to family. They're very, you know, trusting a family for the most part. So, I mean, loyalty is something that that is, has, you know, shaped me. I think I'm a very loyal person. Um, and my best friend can attest to this too. But <laughs> I think that's one of the main things. I mean, I had other things, but I can't put my words together how I want to. But loyalty, I think, especially my mom, she's really big on family. Like, she'll, she'll be like, you know, as, as much as I want to, like, call certain people out and also she'll be like, they're family. Talk about behind closed doors. You know? Okay. <laughs> Also, because I thought she was gonna say she's gonna say no, let's not talk about it at all. So she's saying no, talk about it, but just over here. No, mom, no, my mom is all about talking about your truth and being honest and everything else like that. She's not gonna tell me to just not, you know, feel what I'm feeling, but she's she's just, you know, that's for the public. Don't let the public know what's going on with family. We're gonna keep it in, you know, in the you do you take that now because you know you say you don't post stuff, so you yeah i mean that's just me with my personal life you know how i feel about that i just don't want everyone to know every every move that i make every person that i might be talking to or who i'm not talking to i'm just i'm just private in general because like i said we'll go back to what i said once you put it on the internet you give people uh uh right on the internet you give people a chance to have an opinion about it and Mm. me especially with how sensitive i am i don't need your opinion i really don't (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so and it's it, it, it's like you know it could be just so innocent but once you put it out there for people to have to put an opinion on it and judge it you have no one to blame but yourself regardless of whether you like that opinion or not because you put it out there for it to that happen for to that to yeah all right so let's go to the fourth question and i think you 